When you come across tools that can make your life easier, it can be somewhat of a saving grace. So today I'm going to share with you some electronic drum related products that I found useful over the years. Some of these are eDrum specific and some of these are just additional items that I found useful to have alongside different electronic kits. Let's get to it. Hey, welcome back to the eDrum Workshop. I'm Luke and I hope you're having a great day. If you want to stay up to date with tips, tricks, tutorials, reviews and discussions about anything electronic drum related, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell. And be sure to check out the eDrum Workshop store over at the eDrumworkshop.com for new kits and samples for your module. So today's products are a range of different things that I found useful to have alongside my electronic drums. I've tried to keep it as general and cross-brand compatible as possible. There shouldn't be too much here that doesn't work on most modules. And I've also got links to all of these below in the description if you're interested. The Amazon links are Amazon affiliate links. For those of you that are unfamiliar with the Amazon Associates program, all this actually means is that if you use these links to purchase products from Amazon, it will just let them know that I sent you and it'll give me a small bit of commission for referring you. It won't cost you anything extra, it doesn't do anything dodgy, it just helps support me and the channel if you find any of these products interesting or useful to your needs. Now with that out of the way, let's have a look at some of my favourite electronic drum tools. And don't forget to comment below with your favourites too. First up on the list is this little foam washer. This was created by the UK based company Drone Trigger System. It was super cheap, I paid £4.50 for it and a pound shipping, so £5.50 in total. And what it does is surprisingly impressive for something so simple. It's made for the Go e Drum Hi Hat controller, it sits on top of the plunger and it gives you access to a function that's not normally a feature on this kind of controller. It allows you to use the extra tight hi hat sounds. And if I remember rightly, this isn't even accessible on a VH11 only the VH13. So how does it do it? Well basically it just makes it so that the top symbol stops a little bit earlier. When you press down on the pedal the phone makes contact with the controller box and then you set that as the baseline for your hi-hat closed position. And then because the resistance to the foam is quite high you can then push down to access the pressure sensitivity. It will slowly graduate down to the extra tight closed. And it's kind of crazy how simple it is, yet it works perfectly. It also improves the functionality of the foot splash feature, which doesn't work very well on the Go eDrum controller. I've used it on both my Roland TD50 and my Pearl Mimic Pro, and it works great. So any module that supports this feature and has the extra tight close sample should support this. Unfortunately, that does exclude some of the lower to mid-level modules. And you could probably make something like this yourself, to be honest. But personally, I know nothing about different foam types and densities and how springy they are and I definitely couldn't cut something this perfectly round myself, I don't have the equipment or the patience. So for the sake of a fiver, personally I'm happy to support a one person e-drum company. They've come up with the ingenious solution, they've tested the materials, and then they've brought it out at a price that's really consumer friendly. So hats off to Drone Trigger for this one. So for anybody who doesn't have a compatible module or a Go e-drum hi-hat controller, number two is another hi-hat related item that I really like. I promise that they won't all be hi-hat gadgets. Now unfortunately this has been discontinued but I still feel like it's worth talking about because I've seen a lot of people recommend it over the newer versions and that's the Roland FD7 pedal. Many of you might have already used this pedal before, or at least you know of it. It's essentially identical in function to the Roland FD8 pedal, but if you are fortunate to spot one second hand at a good price, I would personally recommend picking one up. As far as separate hi-hat controllers go, this is my personal favourite. In my opinion, it just feels much more solid under the foot than the FD8. I've actually managed to break two FD8 pedals over the years. I go pretty hard with my cover band and I do a lot of exaggerated movements, you know, keeping things energetic and showmanship like and that just sounds like I've been stomping on it but that's not quite accurate it's actually been the pedal returning back up that's broken it I'm sure this isn't a common problem and I'm definitely responsible for playing like a Muppet but the FD7 seems to return back to its original position in a way that feels like it doesn't bounce quite as hard I also prefer the way that it mimics an actual hi-hat stand with the rod to me the adjustments and the movement of it feels far more like an actual hi-hat stand and changing the height on it to me feels more like actually changing the distance between your symbols there's also a spring tension adjustment which the FD8 doesn't have. It doesn't feel like it makes a gigantic difference but it is nice to have. The only real downside I've found with it is that it is pretty fat. 
It's much wider than the FD8, so it doesn't fit quite as snugly alongside my double kick pedal. But it works great for me. I haven't really got a lot of experience with the Roland FD9, so I can't compare. But on the flip side, I picked it up for £40 second hand on eBay. The FD9 is way more expensive than this, so the comparison doesn't really hold up. So if you do spot an FD7 pedal around, I would highly recommend picking one up, even if it's just as like a rugged backup for gigs. Okay, so number three is going in a completely different direction. This is the SanDisk 32GB USB thumb drive. Right, it's a USB stick. So? These things are 10 a penny, it's not really a big deal. And although that's very true, and I'm sure plenty of people have a lot of thumb drives knocking around these days, what really works for me about this particular one is that it's so small. It barely protrudes from any module that you attach this to, so I can actually leave it on there all of the time. So I don't need to remove it to pack it away in a flight case, and it's not at any major danger of getting snapped off in transit either. And that seems like such an arbitrary thing, but it's really made my life easier. I used to keep a larger USB stick in my hardware bag inside a little case with some foam in it so that it didn't get damaged, and I would regularly misplace it. But these little USB sticks, I just leave them on the modules. And considering how clumsy I am, the footprint of it and not being able to damage it while it's attached to the module is a huge selling point for me. So I bought two of these, one's always attached to my Mimic and one's always attached to my SPDSX. For the price and convenience, it just made sense to have one for each of the modules that I use it for. And 32GB for me is large enough to store plenty of backups, samples and backing tracks. So in the UK they cost me $7.99 from Amazon, but they also appear to be a little bit cheaper on the US store at $7.09, at least at time of writing. So there's links below to both of those stores if you're interested. Now the next item is something you'll have probably seen suggested a lot on Facebook groups and forums and even other YouTube videos. And personally, I'm fully on board with them. Number four is the KZ ZS10 Pro in-ear monitors. These in-ears are insane for the price. I was personally very apprehensive when I saw people suggesting to buy these. I've been bitten by other low-cost in-ear monitors before, but I decided that I'd give them a try after I saw Rob Brown's review on YouTube. And personally, I'm not looking back. For the price, about £41 or $44, US they're an absolute steal and I personally think they sound great with electronic drums. They've got five drivers in them, which was pretty much unheard of in this price range before these, as far as I remember, and the clarity, the frequency response and the headroom is up there with much higher priced monitors. For context, over the years I've used quite a few different in-ears. I've used a few different models of Westone ones, the UM Pro 10 and the UM1. I've used the Shure SE215s. I've had some custom models Folded dual driver Minerva in-ears, and I've also tried out the not so lovely MEE Audio M6 Pro in-ears. Those M6 Pro ones are ones that I've been stung with in the past. I tried them out as a low cost solution on somebody else's recommendation and I found them to be overly bassy and with really really washy undefined high end. So really that's what I was expecting when I bought the KZ ZS10s, but they're light years above the M6 Pros and I would actually put them above every other monitor that I've tried. The Minerva in-ears that I tried were obviously a perfect fit because they were custom molded. The seal and the isolation was amazing, but the sound was only all right. And I also had an issue with water getting into them and they rusted and died. So really I was only looking for a temporary solution to get me through a few gigs. I was intending to look for better in-ears, but I ended up sticking with the KZs or KZ. I'm English. But yeah, they were that impressive. And they're really affordable to replace too if you need to. Personally, I didn't get on very well with the silicon tips that come included. I felt like the bass response was a little bit weaker when I was using those because the seal wasn't that great. And I also personally found them a little bit uncomfortable. But I found a really good seal and a comfortable fit with some aftermarket foam tips. I also bought a cable upgrade which makes them less tangleable. Tangleable? Tangleable. But that's completely not a necessary upgrade. The cable that comes with it's fine. But I have linked to both of those upgrades in the description alongside the in-ears if you fancy trying any of them out. For the price of each of these items, they've been a game changer for me. So we're going to head firmly back into the e-drum realm for number five. This is the SPDSX Editor software. This is a third-party solution to the problem that is the stock Roland Wave Manager program. Roland's Wave Manager really leaves a lot to be desired. It's slow, it's clunky, it looks like it was made in the 90s, and it doesn't even let you access a lot of the features from your computer. It lets you load the samples, rename the kits and save some backups and that's pretty much it. The SPDSX editor solves this with a much more pleasant interface and access to most of the useful features. So you can access things like the MIDI control, the pad modes, pad volume and pan, kit tempo, pad link and kit duplication. And it makes managing your kits way faster and simpler than navigating the tiny little LCD screen. And really it should be exactly what Roland included with the product to begin with. I actually 
actually think that Roland themselves direct people to this editor now, so that really shows you how good it is. You can also edit your kits offline by copying the folders over from your SPDSX to your computer. Then you can make your edits and then load it to your module at a later date, which is great for backup management. I won't delve any deeper than that because this isn't a review. There's a link in the description to their website for the full details, but it's $39 to purchase the license for it, and to me that was well worth it. Swapping between bands with my SPDSX and keeping all my backups organised used to be a really time consuming process and now it just isn't. So on to item number 6. This one will be useful to most e-drummers. If you've got a mesh head on your kick pad it's widely recommended that you should be using a patch. In fact it's pretty much necessary if you want to use felt beaters. Do not use felt beaters on mesh. It will eventually eat away at your mesh head. A familiar sight on e-drum groups everywhere. So which patch should you pick? Well there's a lot out there but for me I eventually settled on the Evans EQBP2 patch. Definitely had to read that one. It's a double patch so it fits two beaters, it supports a double bass pedal, but there is also a single variant out there and it's made from a soft nylon. Now a quick disclaimer, nylon patches and felt might not work out very well either. I've not thoroughly tested this particular one myself with a felt beater, but I have used a different nylon patch in the past that did wear down my beater. So if you are adamant on using felt, maybe go for one with a more plasticky or smooth feel. But if you're using plastic or probably even wood beaters, this patch is intended to soften the attack on an acoustic drum. Fortunately, it also seems to slightly dampen the acoustic noise on an e-drum. It's not going to work miracles and make your kick pad silent, but every little helps when it comes to noise reduction. So I personally use this alongside my Tama Speed Cobra double kick pedals using the plastic beaters and the patches stuck onto a Drumtech Pro single ply mesh head. And that head is a super thick mesh and it's the closest I've ever felt to an acoustic head. Call that a stealth number seven on this list. But with this head being so thick that does increase the overall noise of the kick pad. This patch does ever so slightly help mitigate this. But not just that, for me it just feels a bit nicer and it also slightly helps on the rebound too. Again it's not going to solve all of your double triggering or your beta burying problems but again it adds up alongside the drum tech pro head and the kd120 foam that i've got behind the head and it also sticks to the head incredibly well which is something that i've had a lot of problems with over the years with different patches many of them seem to just come away from the mesh head eventually as you can see from the residue which is left around where my current patch lives so all of those things together make this my personal favorite patch and everything on this list will of course come down to personal preference but these are all tools that i found through extensive experience over the years and I think that they really enhance my overall electronic drumming life so I thought I'd share them with the wider community. What tools do you rely on for your electronic drums? Do you have any experience with anything that I've listed here and if not do any of them interest you at all? Let me know down in the comments I'd love to hear what you use day to day. If you found this video useful and you're planning on buying anything from this list using the links below would be really appreciated and would help support the channel but even if not consider popping a like on the video and subscribing to the channel. You can find find video reviews of other products up on the screen. You can follow me on Instagram for extra little snippets between videos. Check out the eDrum Workshop store for plug and play kits and useful samples for your module. And I'll see you in the next video. Enjoy the rest of your day. Cheers!